Hello everyone, welcome to Smart Home Charge. Today we're talking about using public chargers to charge your electric car. Now, the chances that you will actually need to use one are quite low. In fact, only three to 6% of driving per year is over 100 miles, which is well within the range of most electric cars. So most of us will be charging at home, but of course on a longer journey or perhaps even for emergencies, you will need to use a public charger. So today we're looking at what is involved. There are two types of public charger, but the principle of using them doesn't fundamentally change. The first are on the road chargers. These are basically chargers that you will find at service stations, such as the Ecotricity chargers, which you may well have seen. Or other rapid chargers which are nearby motorways or in supermarket car parks or even a Starbucks. They typically charge at 50 kilowatts. They're the most common rapid charger, but we're increasingly seeing faster chargers such as 100 kilowatts, 150, even 350 kilowatts. So just be aware that some are faster than others. Some of the operators who run these public chargers are BP Chargemaster, they run the Polar Plus network, Ionity, which we've done a video about before, Ecotricity, who have chargers up and down the country at service stations, Podpoint, Genie Point, Instavolt, and obviously Tesla has its own supercharger network, but that is for Tesla owners only. In terms of payment method, well, it's very much a pay at pump service. So you will pay via the app for that particular charger or contactless. So just keep in mind that you may need a specific app to use that specific charger. So have a look, do some research beforehand and try and download some of the common apps if you can. How much do these rapid on the road chargers cost? Well, depending on the type of charger, you could expect to pay between 20 and 35 pence per kilowatt hour. Some chargers such as the Ionity chargers, which we looked at previously, charge a flat eight pounds fee. And there may well be other charger operators who work in a similar way. In terms of connection type, well, all rapid chargers will be tethered. So just like a petrol pump, they already have the cables attached to them. You won't need to use your own, but there will be two primary types of cable to use. CCS, which is the most common form, I would say now, for rapid charging. Most new cars use CCS, but some also use CHAdeMO. So just check what connection your car has before you go to use a rapid charger. In terms of what they look like, well, they're easily identifiable. They're usually well lit. Their location should be quite easy to find because they're quite big units. So they actually do resemble a traditional petrol pump in most circumstances. They're quite large and they have a number of units for multiple vehicles and they're normally located near major roads anyway. One tip to remember, it's worth downloading the ZapMap app. It shows charging locations on a map and tells you if the unit is working or not and what connections are actually available. So you can be sure you don't turn up to a charger and it actually doesn't have the connection for your car. The other type of charger you're likely to see is a destination charger. Effectively, these are just chargers that you'll see in supermarket car parks, uh, at your work, maybe at hotels, gyms, other car parks as well. They're called destination chargers because you are going there for another purpose, i.e. not to charge, but there are chargers available because actually your car's just going to be sat there doing nothing. You may as well plug it in and top up your range. Example operators of destination chargers include Podpoint, Polar, Engine, Genie Point, Alpha Power, Fastned, Source, and there are numerous other regional operators. So have a look online, see which ones are common in your area. As I mentioned, typical locations include workplace, hotels, gyms and supermarkets. In terms of their charging output, you're likely looking at 7.4 kilowatts, which is what you'll find in a typical home charge point, and they may well go up to 22 kilowatts. But again, just check what your car is capable of. Just because the charger itself is 22 kilowatts doesn't mean that that is the rate your car will charge at. It may well be limited to 7.4, 
or 11, for example. In terms of payment method, again, this is likely to be an app. So check ahead what apps you'll need for your area or charges that you're likely to use most often. There are also instances where the charge point will accept an RFID card or a fob. These are unique to the charger operator and you may well have to order one. And increasingly we're seeing more and more chargers including the option for contactless which is good, we want more of those please. There are some free chargers still around, some supermarkets will offer free charging, uh, some hotels and gyms will offer free charging to, to their existing customers, so have a look ahead. Otherwise, again, you're looking at an average of between 20 and 35 pence per kilowatt hour. Most public destination chargers are untethered. This means there is not a cable attached and you'll need to bring your own. I hope that answers any questions that you might have around public charging. If I have missed anything or you have any further questions, please leave me a comment below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you'd like more content like this, then please leave us a like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.